Praise the Lord. Thomas Manton the fourth here. The Lord is speaking to me about something amazing that's very uh, unique uh, today. I, I want to do this by the Holy Ghost. I'm going, to enti I'm going to entitle this, The Nations Need Saviors. And I'm going to explain that. Now, first of all, the Savior, Jesus, the King of Kings, is the Savior. But guess what? If a devil's in power, like Mao was, like Hitler was, like Stalin was, like Idi Amin was, like Fidel Castro was, Jesus was not, not on the throne then, but he was on the throne at other times. There were men that uh, <laughs> were, were on the earth doing evil things, and it's the church of Jesus Christ that needs to stand and dethrone them. Uh, Bonhoeffer, whatever his name was, German guy, Dietrich something, Bonhoeffer, I think it's a name like that. Back in the time of World War II, when Nazi, from, he was from Nazi Germany from that time, they said, uh, he said, uh, the problem is evil triumphs when good men do nothing. Albert Einstein also said that. The problem in the world is not evil men, it's good men that do nothing about it. So the nations need saviors. There's a scripture in Obadiah. Uh, Obadiah is only one chapter, so you don't say Obadiah 1, because it's not an Obadiah 2. Duh. I always question the, the, the IQ level of people that go, you know, 3 John uh, 1, verse 2. No, there's not a 3 John 2. It's only a verse 2, which is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. So don't mess up with that. Obadiah 17 to 21. Because there's only one chapter that says, there will be saviors on Mount Zion. What does it mean? Obviously, if you have any astuteness or intelligence, you don't ever, uh, you would never try to debate the fact that Jesus is Lord because it's only him that's the savior of the world. If you know anything about the gospel at all, even halfway or a quarter of the way, you'd understand that that's not even a, an argument to have. So again, uh, let's, 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 let's uh, take the thermometer and the temperature of the IQ of people that would want to argue such a thing or think such a, something else. In other words, if you could think that there's another savior, like, of another, like another religious figure, like the resurrection kind of thing, then you don't know the real one. So get back and know the real one, and then let's talk in an advanced class about what a savior is plural, save yours, meaning men on the earth that can change things. I'll say right from the outset, Donald Trump is one. The election is coming up in a couple of days, and I'm going to speak about that here. The differences between him, hey, psst, the differences between him and uh, this, this uh, fraudulent uh, low IQ person who's running against him who is totally unqualified. Uh, I was thinking a lot about it today, and I'm going to get into it. But every nation needs a savior. What is a savior of a nation? Someone that cares about the nation. You care about the nation. Donald Trump obviously cares about America. You have presidents of countries, including certain ones close to where we are, who don't care at all, uh, seemingly about their country. It's almost like... It's almost like treason when they want to wave the flag and play the national anthem, you know, whatever that, however that song goes, you know. And you're like, what? What? Why do you play that? Oh, it's your opportunity for business. Okay, I understand. Business is open. Business is good, right? But the people of the nation need to be cared for, need to be delivered, need to be uh, sorted out, so to speak, need to be provided for need to be cared about. And I looked at this one in America, the other candidate from the D party, D for devil, <laughs> D for whatever, D-E something, uh, uh, who, who never got a vote uh, for their current uh, campaign. In fact, when they wanted to run themselves, they got less than 1% of the vote and everybody said they were a joke and they had to back out in embarrassment. Next thing you know, the guy who ran against Donald Trump in 2020, you know who he is. He doesn't, I don't, he doesn't often know who he is, but we all know who he is. But 
he doesn't know who he is himself half the time, it seems. Uh, he uh, picked her as his uh, per so as her person, as his uh, assistant, whatever. So every person, I mean, everything that she got along the way was given to her. She didn't earn it. Now she's dependent on that machine and that regime. And guess what? The whole thing, the election is coming up in two days. I prophesy the whole thing is going down in flames because God has an agenda to, to save the nation and save the nations, and he knows who's right. Look at a man like Elon Musk now who's joined forces with Donald Trump. He made his own money. He, he, he's a self-made multi, multi-billionaire, trillionaire. I, I just said, I just saw that if, if this is the case, it seemed like a legitimate story because they explained all the details of it. Seems like it happened, although maybe the world doesn't even know yet, that he bought the Apple company. I don't know. I just saw that. And he said it's a $2 trillion deal. So he'll have that whole mechanism to run his whole empire. But this is the guy that built his own thing. So we say we welcome him into the, to be a cabinet minister of the new uh, presidential administration of Donald Trump. Praise the Lord. So um, not that there isn't a fight, not that they won't try to play games, but it seems like things are going very well to, um, to, to put things in the right way because God, you know, knows who's who and what's what. You, you know, a scam from a real man, a scam from a real person. So add an S on to the name of one person and you have scam, <clears throat> you know, instead of cam. Uh, it's infuriating, you know. Someone that was given everything, earned nothing, has no credibility, uh, can't even put two sentences together, a sentence together, can't speak, can't defend policy, can't ever answer a question. What a joke. And the wars that began, they began lately because of uh, people looked at these guys, these people there and said, they're a joke, we could just go do what we want. But let me tell you, when the boss comes back into power, it's gonna straighten thing, a lot of things out in the world. So I celebrate that right now. I saw a vision and I don't know the exact number, but I pray it'll go above 300 of the Electoral College. Uh, I saw red, the red color, which is the color of the Republican, which is the color of Trump, the red party. I saw the number going above the top. You need 270 Electoral College votes to win. I pray and I hope it will go above 300 for him, but he only needs 270. 270, 271, 272 is enough to win. And depending on the state, state by state, it adds up. Each state has a number of points, a number of, uh, a number. And whoever gets the most states and adds up to more than 270 electoral college votes, state by state wins the election, regardless of the popular vote. But it seems now that he may also win the popular vote. We'll see. Today is Sunday. It's coming up on Tuesday, two days from now. We'll see. And I've been praying <clears throat> for months, and I've never come out to make an announcement, but I've said that I'm praying because I know the right one that needs to be there. Let me tell you something. In a nation like Kenya, look at the political scene, right? Look, look at the, all kinds of things that are going on. What's going to happen? Let me tell you, God has to find someone or make someone or, or fix someone into a position that they care about the people because that's why any elected official is there. Not for themselves, not because they shucked and jived and slept their way to the top, not because they <clears throat> are corrupt or doing all kinds of uh, funny things, but because they, le they legitimately have a desire to help the nation. The nation needs saviors. All through the Bible, I, I, I'm speaking, of, you know, in a realm of biblical, in a biblically historic uh, format here. All through the Bible, you see uh, men that were raised up as deliverers, as saviors. Look at Moses, saved his, uh, the Israelites, the Hebrews. Look at uh, 
Job stood up for righteousness in his day. <clears throat> Became a great testimony, even with the double blessing after all he'd gone through. Look at Elijah. Cut up the prophets of Baal and dethroned Jezebel. Oh, yes. Oh, Jezebel's dead and Ahab is now afraid. He's naked and afraid like a buffoon in the corner. Doesn't know what to do anymore. Ahab. What became of him? The Bible even says that the Lord spared Ahab's life. If you read the scripture, and I've read it. <clears throat> what he said, the curse and the judgment will come upon Ahab's sons. And it did. God said, I'll leave you alone, Ahab, but your sons will suffer because of what you did. <laughs> I'll tell you. There's one thing about the kingdom I never understood. Why do you make another generation suffer for what you did? It's very scary. And personally, myself, I don't like it. I think the person that did the crime should do the time. They should be the one punished, not, you know, somebody else. You have people born. They don't even know what happened. They didn't choose to be there, but all of a sudden they have to account for something someone else did. You know, it's a little bit of an interesting thing there. But, but nevertheless, whatever God says is right. Look at David. He so beat every odd. He so beat every adversity. He so overcame every impossibility. Over and over and over that God said, I like you, David. You're, you're even after my own heart. And I'll bless you to a thousand generations. I'll bless you in your house. And even cause the Savior of the world to come through your lineage and your bloodline. Jesus was called the son of David. Jesus was the ultimate deliverer, but he was even called the son of David. So was David important? Yeah. Was Solomon important in his day? Yes. Was Moses important? Was Abraham important, who became the friend of God? Was Joseph important, who became the prime minister of uh, those things? Was, was, uh, was Elijah important? Was Elisha important? Were the other prophets important? Was Paul the apostle important? He challenged and shook the whole Roman Empire. In fact, the Roman Empire began to collapse and burn after Paul walked the earth. I've never heard anybody really attribute the two together. But let me tell you, there's a correlation there. Because uh, Paul was a representative of power Christianity. And then Nero took off his head, but then Nero went insane and went running through the city like a buffoon, a demon-possessed maniac, and burnt his own city down. And then the Bible, uh, the, uh, the history, the scripture doesn't really talk about the, the specifics of it, but history tells the story of how, how Nero died such a horrible death. Evidently didn't go to heaven from there. And that was the end of that. The Roman Empire began to collapse. So... Who's powerful? People in the church that are supposed to rise up. So where are our deliverers today? The men who, want, who, who actually will get elected to polit political offices to rule countries to better the, the nations and the societies. Where are they? Donald Trump is one. And I endorse him 100%. I'm behind him 100%. I believe in him 100%. And I don't believe in the other one at all. I'll just tell you straight out. Since we began praying seriously, me and some of my other friends, and we're not together on it, we don't, we don't talk, but I hear other ones have risen up. A few, not many, one or two or three or four or five that have become very public on television begin to rise up, rise up and pray and speak about this coming election in, in, in the United States, November 5th. Today's November 2nd, 3rd. Four is Monday, five is Tuesday. Today is my father's birthday. My father even had times when he won the election on his birthday. That it, Years before that, his, uh, his birthday was election day. That he was re-elected to Congress again. Even on his birthday, he celebrated the victory. My father was a great political leader. He was a righteous man. He stood up for good. 
And, and then I led him to the Lord before he was even knew the Lord. Now he's in heaven. So is my mom. So is, is, are his parents. I led them all to Jesus. They're all up there. In fact, about three weeks after my father died, I think he died on July 22nd, 2006, if I remember right. About three weeks later, the Lord spoke to me and said, Thomas, my son, your father is really enjoying heaven. I thought, oh. Uh, you talk about making my day, making my month, making my year, making my life. What, what greater thing can I hear? He's there, so is my mom. I didn't get to see my mom too much before she died because I was, and my family took her somewhere. And uh, next thing you know, I felt an overwhelming feeling of grief and anguish one day it just came on me. I just began to weep. I just began to feel such a... And it was in the spirit because I had no natural update about my mom, but I, I felt she was about to go and I prayed. Then a long time later, not right away, God doesn't always tell you everything the first day. He just doesn't sometimes. S quite some time later, I don't know how long, I don't remember, but it was uh, quite a bit later on. The Lord said to me, my, my mom really cried out to him before, before she passed. And I thought, well, she's there too now. Then I had a dream when Reinhard Bonnke was about to uh, pass. But, and he, he wasn't dead yet. Nobody knew. And the Lord has given me dreams about Oral Roberts before he was going to die. And then Reinhard Bonnke before he was going to die. Before... No announcement. He's about to go from no human on earth because nobody knew. And the Lord visited me in a dream twice. Oral Roberts first. And then about two weeks later, he went. Reinhard Bonnke next. About two, three weeks later, he went. And in the dream, I, heard my, I saw Reinhard Bonnke standing as a young man, very handsome, like he's in his 30s. Suit, hair perfect. Rimmed glasses, stranded, suit, very dapper, very posh looking. Behind this big marble counter, and it was long, as long as you can see. Like it went from here, from this world to the other world, that marble counter. I didn't understand what, what was the significance of that. And then I heard my mom's voice speaking so clearly, like she was down past the counter, back in another room somewhere. I heard her voice. She was having a conversation with someone really loud and clear. I could hear it. And I thought, in the dream, I listened to my mom talk. And I'm like, hey. I woke up and I thought, my mom is not alive. She's not on earth. How, could, how did I hear her voice? And then Reinhard Bonnke was standing there, like st st still, no expression on his face. Oral Roberts looked the same way in the dream. And I saw Oral Roberts dressed in Indian regalia. He was an American Indian. Like he had put all his uh, old things on. And he was wearing those. And he was standing against the, wa the wall. And in the dream, Benny Hinn was ministering. Because they were friends. And then Benny Hinn, in the dream, called me up. Called me out of, the, out of the front row, whatever. To come up and gave me the mic and asked me to minister. The power of God hit the place. I began to walk through the aisles. People were falling, being slain everywhere. I even looked back at Benny like, is this okay? <laughs> Can you give me a minute? Let me flow. <laughs> I, didn't, I was hoping I was, you know, I was in the right uh, protocol, whatever. And, uh, it, it was amazing. Then I woke up. And Oral Roberts was standing back against the wall, motionless, like a statue. He had Indian regalia. His face was like stone. No expression. In the dream later, years later, I had about Reinhard Bonnke, the same look. No expression, didn't turn, didn't move, didn't speak, just standing there, holding onto the counter, arms like this, standing like this. And about two, three weeks later, we heard he had departed. So how did I hear my mom's voice in the dream? And then he was about to go and she was over there on the other side. Because she's there. Because she's there. If she wasn't there in the heavenly glory, uh, I wouldn't have had that experience. And then the Lord spoke to me about my father. And my grandparents, I know, 
because both of them, I held their hands many times and prayed. And they prayed. And my grandfather, when he finally gave his life to the Lord, he was 86 years old. One day, uh, he, he walked into the kitchen <laughs> in a house in New York. And he, they lived in another house somewhere. And then my dad moved them to our old apartment. Because we had moved, where did we go? We went somewhere, I can't remember. Gave, oh, we got, we got two, two houses, one in uh, Sunnyside and then one in Astoria, and one to the other. And they were both historic properties, really amazing properties. I, I don't want to go all into that right now. Very valuable. And so once we moved there, we, he, he, he upgraded my grandparents and brought them from the little place where they were to our three-bedroom apartment where I had grown up, that was my childhood place, yeah? Well, finally we left there, so they were living there. So he came around the, from the living room, around the, the dining room, and came into the kitchen. There's like a, a wall there, and came into the kitchen. And he lifted up this, this cup of tea, and the cup had the Irish prayer, may the wind of favor always be at your, your back, uh, May your ship sail with the wind of God. You know, some kind of funny expression like that with Irish clovers all over the, it's called the Irish blessing. And may the Lord always hold you in the hollow of his hand. <laughs> I remember that. He picked up the cup of tea and he went like this. And the tea was spilling everywhere. I grabbed his hand. I said, Grandpa, please put that. Let me take that. The tea was all over the floor, all over the counter. I said, go, please. I said, Grandma, please, hey. Come, come. Let him go sit down. Let's help him out. We bring him tea. Now he's 86, yeah? And his, his hand is moving like this. So I thought. It's twilight. So the Lord spoke to me, spoke to me that day. And he said, now, I had been fasting and praying for them for years. And I had just gotten saved. Let's see, I got saved three years later. He went. And then a year after that, the fourth year I'm saved, my grandmother went. And uh, I'd been praying for them for years since I got saved. Always preaching to them. I'd go visit them, tell them the gospel stories and all that. And they'd listen so attentively. They loved listening to, to all that. I'd tell my grandfather, I said, you know what? When you go out of here, you're going to be walking on the streets of gold. And you know what he said? That with his Irish brogue, he said, accent, that's the main thing. Yeah, that's the main thing. I said, yeah. So here, his hand is shaking. We had to make another cup of tea for him. And the Lord speaks to me and says, now. I went over to him. I was so nervous. You, know, you could pray for 100,000 people out in a crusade or around the world. It's like nothing. But your own family, it's a bit different. You know, I was very, I felt very nervous. I had to push myself. I walked up to him. I said, Grandpa, we're going to pray right now. He looked up at me, he looked, he's, he looked shocked, you know, he's, he's, he looked puzzled, like his eyes were blazing, but he looked like, okay, but what do you mean? I said, give me your hand. He gave me his hand. I said, now say this prayer with me, and I led him in a prayer. I said so many things, I covered everything I could, about three, I didn't do like a one minute sinner's prayer, I did like three minutes. I covered everything, break the devil, repent of everything, go to the whole life. Receive eternal life. I just, I, everything I could think of, I was just flowing. But it went about two, three minutes. He squeezed my hand so hard, it nearly broke my hand. My father was, a, my grandfather was very strong. He was a, he was a rugby star in the 1920s in Ireland, and he was, a, then he was a plasterer. He built. My grandfather built with his hands the Empire State Building in New York, and also the uh, Capitol Building in Washington D.C. and the Pentagon. High ceilings. He was up there on the scaffold with his hands. He had muscles like this. When I was when I was little, I used to go up to just say, "Let me grab your arm," and I'd squeeze. Now I have that too because I was a bodybuilder. It squeezes. 
muscles, you know. Be like, his muscles would be like out to here. So my hand was white, you know, like you get white knuckles when your blood circulation gets cut off. When I pulled my hand away, my hand was numb. I looked, my whole, all my knuckles were white. My fingers were white. I squeezed my hand so hard. I, you could tell he was receiving. And then, boom, the presence of God fell. Even my grandmother was sitting there, and she just sat back like this, and she had this like, heavenly look on her face. I thought, this is the most amazing thing. And her, I had already prayed with her to receive the Lord. That's a done deal. I think about, it was a month later or so, he went to heaven. <clears throat> then my grandmother, a year later. It was really sad. They were married 63 years. And they were used to being together all the time. She, she'd call him from the other room. She'd call him Tom. Tom! Tom, and then she'd go, oh, she realized he wasn't there. That's sad, isn't it? She even kept the obituary of him from the newspaper. She cut it out. She'd keep it on the side table by the couch. And she'd go, Tom, Tom, like, he's not coming, you know, where are you? I'm calling you, you're not there. Well, you're not coming, where are you? And then she'd look and see the thing and go, oh, oh, I forgot. <laughs> he's not here. <laughs> Woo. So the greatest thing is what? To get saved. The next greatest thing is to be rich in this world and be blessed by God so you can do everything God wants you to do. And the next greatest thing after that is to win the world for Jesus, as many as we can, to do something righteous. And if you think God doesn't call people to have positions to like affect the, the, the benefit of mankind, you're crazy. Of course he does. And Donald Trump is one. The hand of God is upon him. And the hand of God is nowhere near the other one. The opponent, the lady, the demon, demon crap. Not there. In fact, someone stood up in a rally and said, Jesus is Lord. And she mocked him and shouted at the guy, said, oh, you're in the wrong rally. You need to get out of here and go down to the smaller one down the street. And mocked, mocked Jesus and mocked him. She said it. Even the archbishop's wife, I was there with them last week. She's, I, told, I, I grabbed her, I said, you know, Trump, is, Trump, Trump should sail through in this election. He has to. She went, yeah. He said, and the lady, she's like mocking Jesus and mocking Christianity. I said, yeah. So even here in Africa, even in Africa, the news is going around the world. People are seeing the news. So since we began to pray, I began to pray. God gave me the assignment to pray for Donald Trump. We saw like about two months ago, everything began to spiral down for the opponent. Everything they say is a fraud. Everything they're caught in lies. They can't speak. And then uh, even the existing president, you know who he is? Sleepy Crooked, someone calls it. I'm trying not to say the name so the algorithms won't pick me up on this because I was concerned about you know, what, all that I'm saying here. So uh, <laughs> he was calling Trump's people garbage the time when she was supposedly given the best speech where she actually was a little bit coherent. And the media didn't even cover it. It got squashed because it was such a big story of what the guy did, even against her, to shoot himself in the foot, so to speak. It's, it's, a, it's a joke. It's like anything they try to do, it can't work. Like they said there was a lie that she worked at McDonald's, so Trump... He goes to work at McDonald's. It becomes an internet sensation around the world. The, the president of Google called Donald Trump and said, the thing you did at McDonald's to go there and work there and make French fries and serve the people was the biggest searched hit thing. Got so many hits, it, it, like beyond what we could even imagine. Then the guy there calls the people garbage, so Trump... <laughs> has a brilliant idea of one of his people. I think they collaborated together. Let's get a garbage truck. 
And he get, went in the garbage and put on the garbage man's uniform, the vest, and said, hello from my garbage truck. You like my garbage truck? And all the people were like, you call us garbage? No, you can't do that. You can't insult the American people. Done! Canceled! Out! They're fired! They're going! Let me tell you. They have to go in Jesus' name. Now, people are talking about after the election Tuesday that maybe some of these buffoons in America, some of these devils, will try to stir up something to try to, you know, pervert the, divert the cause of justice. We pray that down too in Jesus' name. Because on January 20th, 2025, Donald J. Trump needs to be sworn in as the 47th president of America. I'm declaring it. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm declaring it in Jesus' name. It needs to happen. So I can't say that they won't try, these devils, <clears throat> but they will never succeed. Can you say amen? In the nation of Kenya, they want to mess with the church. They won't succeed. They won't succeed. That's not going to happen. The Roman Empire tried to hurt the church. <clears throat> the guy in Russia, was his name Nikita Khrushchev? Was it that one? One of the presidents of uh, Russia says, we, we need, he was just a demon-possessed guy. We need to wipe the church of Jesus Christ out of our country. Well, he got wiped out of his country. I think cancer struck him and he died like a fool, but the church is still there. You, you can't, can't stop the church from doing what God wants. The church is the most powerful entity on the earth. The devil, even Satan can't do all he wants to do while the church is here. Once the rapture happens and it's gone, all judgment, all hell is going to break loose because there'll be nothing anymore to restrain him. But in the meantime, we are the restrainers of everything evil. So I prophesy God's going to raise up more good men to be in government. Another one this week came out in the media, one of the counties in Kenya, like he stole so much money. He just, they just go in there in government and find a way to access the public funds and steal it all for themselves. May I prophesy, every, may every one of them be exposed, caught, arrested, and some even put in prison. They shouldn't be able to pay their way out, amen, through the anti-corruption commission, whatever, and they're going to go seize some of their stuff, like a few million of it from their account when they have more. They should actually go to prison in Jesus' name. They should go in prison, into the hell of a prison. Why? To make a public example of them to the others that would come behind them and say, this is it's too risky to touch the funds of the public. You know, people like that only work by fear. You beat them, you torture them, you break them enough, you make examples of them enough. Let people, some of them even be executed. Why not? If it could be so. President Trump says some, some people need the death penalty in America for certain crimes. We're not going to tolerate certain things. <clears throat> that, that, that can also set a precedent. For others that say, no, we can't do these kind of things. And you stop it by law and order, by strong law and order. It can only be a righteous man who's on the right side of things to do that. A, a, a wicked man who's a corrupt abuser of the system for his own corrupt gain will never put, put forth a cause to say the strongest law and order needs to be here. Why? Because they're also guilty. It could affect them. But a man who's right and clean has never done anything wrong like that. He can say it. And Donald Trump is one of those men. Let me tell you. So I looked at men like Elon Musk. I looked at, uh, uh, first let me say President Trump. President Donald Trump. He has his own money. He made his own money. He's not there to get any money. Even Uhuru Kenyatta in Kenya, right? Did he, I don't know if, what happened with the monies or whatever. But he already had money, so it seemed like he was a, a reasonable guy that he wasn't there to take anything. I, whatever happened in the end, I don't know, but it seems like people around, they always do these kind of things anyway. But that was very pleasant to see a man that's already successful in his own right. He's not looking to take anything from anybody. Maybe he 
maybe he somehow wants to serve the people. I'm not, I'm not saying it all got done, because in some ways it did, in some ways it definitely didn't. But I wish, it, I wish there was more time to do more. I wish it could have gone better. God wants to raise up people who care about, not just themselves and their own filthy pockets. Because you, you do these kind of crimes, you're going to hell. I don't care if you say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, I believe in Jesus. So does the devil. You lying devil. You corrupt, crooked animal. You're there to lie, steal, kill, and destroy, and seize power. And then you think, oh, I could be forgiven because I just say in the name of Jesus. And, and the very church that people use to get them somewhere, you know, become like, they're like fools. You think God is mocked, can be mocked like that? He cannot. Let me tell you right now. So look at the difference between the two in America. You have the lady who mocks Jesus and tells the guy shouting, Jesus is Lord, to get out. This is not a place for you. We don't want that here. Yeah, she said it. It's not, a, it's not like a conjecture of something we thought about, what we heard about, somebody said about, the position of the heart or the attitude or mind of this person. It's on video. It's on all the news programs. Go on YouTube. Just write the person's name, the lady's name, and then Jesus is Lord. I think that would be enough in the search. And that news if that could work. And certain, you see the video. You see her there looking at this guy like he's a fool. Get out. You don't need to be here. While they're talking about abortion and killing babies in the middle of that, the man didn't stand up and say, you lying devil. He said, Jesus is Lord. That's a nice thing to say. Nothing wrong with that. No law against that. He didn't say, you murderers, you liars, you... He didn't do that. Could have probably and been still right. But stood up and said, Jesus is Lord. Because those three words can get out quick and loud. And, and then somebody recorded it. And that thing has gone viral around the world. Here's President Trump. He goes on with pastors, Holy Ghost filled people. Amen. Sitting there talking about Christianity and the gospel and his upbringing, how his father brought him to Billy Graham's crusades and how he had a pastor who was a good teacher and all that. How he used to go to Sunday schools on Saturday and learn about the gospel and learn about the Bible. And then he says, I embrace Christianity. I'm going to stand up for it. Amen. Even the amendment that tried to be passed by Lyndon Johnson that said that the church could be taxed in the tax code. He said, we're going to close that loophole. He did it before, he'll do it again. And so many things happened under his uh, watch. You know, I, I started to say in another broadcast, and I didn't finish the thought, because I, I realized I didn't finish it. In the first 100 days, I'm going to say it quick right now so I don't get distracted and not finish it. In the first 100 days of Donald Trump's presidency in 20, beginning 2017, January 2017, First hundred days, three months and a week, 10 days. So that would be what? January 21, February 21, March 21, April 21. Let's say to May 2nd. Just in those, in those three months and a week, a week and a, in, uh, three months and 10 days. He did 850 major feats by executive order to change things for the better in America. 850. I have the list. Now, this is so many years ago, I'd have to look back in the archives, but I used to, I used to have it in my WhatsApp, and I said it to a few people. I said, you say this man is this and this and this. The media wants to paint him this and this and this. Look what he did. And people are remembering very well. Let me tell you, he's up with the black people, people of color. He's up with the people of uh, the Latin origin. Up, 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 up. He's up with every segment of society. But I want to tell you who's voting for the other one. All the demons in the land. There's demons in America. Have you noticed? There's demons in Africa. Have you noticed? People that are demon-possessed, twisted, and, and messed up, and they believe the hype of lies of the media who try to paint Donald Trump as some evil man. 
Yeah, and you've, you've all heard it. Even someone told me all through Europe, the, 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 the left uh, wing, left leaning media people, they're like, oh, Trump, and calling them all kinds of names. Let me tell you something about me. I don't care. I don't care. <clears throat> Even people in my own family in New York were bitten by this bug. I always say, some of them, not all of them. I, I say, you know, anybody that and hates Donald Trump, especially for no good reason, really, there's something wrong with them. The devil got into them somewhere. The devil touched them somewhere. So you have these people that are just insane. They're for all kinds of illicit, satanic things. Of course they're going to hate the man who's righteous and wants to stand up for what's right. So like, ah, we want Kamala. We want uh, 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 Trump. Uh, no, that guy. So you have a lot of that. So that's the votes that she's going to get. And they say he's this and he's that and he's that. Hey, he was a billionaire businessman, right? So what, what, what's a man supposed to do? Did he have girlfriends or whatever? Who, who are you to judge, right? The, the, the office of the person who's going to lead the nation, Jesus isn't running, by the way. Neither is one of his angels. It's a man or a woman on the earth. And if you look at the track record between him of the good position he has and the good heart he has for people, that he really loves people and he really cares about people, compared to her, who's, who's useless, I mean, the last almost four years, the two of them together, they've done nothing but bring destruction to America. The illegal aliens have come in by the millions. <laughs> I woke up this morning, I was singing this song I saw, they made like another meme song, AI song from Trump. Because he said, they're eating, they're eating the dogs, they're eating the cats, they're eating the pets of the people that live there in Springfield, Ohio or somewhere. Some of the illegal aliens that became a... So they made this song. <laughs> they're eating the dogs, they're eating the cats, they're eating the pets of the people that live there and they have a cat go meow in the background. And the guy begins to sing a song. People of Springfield, please don't eat my cats. <laughs> please don't eat my cats. Don't eat my dogs. That's depraved people, you know. And you have people that are coming to America. They're terrorists, drug runners. They're, they're, they're committing murders. So the presidential team and the president, presidential position of Donald Trump, he said, we're going to get these people. They're not going to do this to our country. And, and let me say something about the deportation process or whatever has to happen. It's going to cost money. It's going to take a lot of effort. But what do you do? Leave people that are coming to kill, steal, and destroy that came in with no legality at all to just do that? No, there has to be some reckoning. We're talking about saving nations. There are policies involved. Economically, socially, legally, industry-wise, all of that. Now, he, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., the nephew of John F. Kennedy, the great president, the son of, he might have been the son of uh, Robert Kennedy, who was John Kennedy's brother, I think. Is gonna, has a real passion to regulate and look at the food and drug industry and all that. He's going to have a cabinet position for that. And Elon Musk, and he was a Democrat. They were staunch Democrats. He actually came over to Trump's side because, because of the greatness of Donald Trump. Switch parties and all that. A lot of people are switching parties. You have major venture capitalists, major industrialists, tech giants, different people, uh, people that are meaningful. And look at the other side. They don't have any help. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If Elon Musk comes your way and says, we want to help develop industries in America, he's a man that's already done it. And we want to also uh, s streamline and cut down the, uh, the waste in the federal government. He knows how to do it. He's already done it. When he bought the Twitter company, he went in and fired almost everybody. 
and just put it together correctly and now X is a well running machine and also has free speech and not playing those dirty games like they used to do. That's, that's, that's saving something. The Elon walking around with his mom and telling the testimonies about his dad, how great he was, and his mom, how great she is. Wonderful, wonderful. The other people don't do that. In fact, the opponent of Donald Trump, that person's father was a, a, a Marxist professor with anti-American ideologies. And everything they went through and did was destroyed and turned into something worse. They have no qualifications. They have no credibility. They have no business being in the White House anymore from this season right now. They're fired. Heaven's position I'm giving you. <clears throat> now how it all plays out along the way, we have to keep praying. Uh, I, I don't consider myself an influencer. I'm a prophet. I'll speak what I'm going to say to declare things in the realm of the spirit, but I'm not leading any movement. I don't have a bunch of people that I'm trying to tell to sway anything this way or that way. But I just say people obviously do need to get out and vote. They don't need to take... Uh, for granted that it's just going to go one way or the other. Even because of the rise in the polls and all of that of Donald Trump, people still need to go and exercise their thing to vote. Men, women, everybody needs to go and vote on Tuesday. Tuesday is the limit. Today's Sunday. It's the day after tomorrow. Today's November 3rd. Tomorrow's November 4th. The election in America is November 5th, 2024. Everybody needs to go and vote. And again, in the natural, I don't know what I can do about all that, but in the spirit, I can speak it again right now. Father, let, release your fire and power across everybody that they feel convicted, that they'll, they'll feel so passionate, that they'll even cancel their schedules. They'll take the whole day. They, don't, they won't care what else they have to do that day. There was one lady that says, oh, she had an appointment, uh, a res dinner reservation with her daughter, and she couldn't wait anymore to do the early voting thing. So she said she's going to leave and come back on Tuesday. They should have canceled the dinner. She should have stayed there until it was done. Said, Let, we, can, we can have dinner tomorrow. Yeah. Pe pe what, what value do people put on their freedom? I mean, <laughs> this, is a very important, this is a very important day. So will the, will the opposition get a lot of votes? Absolutely. Why? Because of, I think because of demons. I think because of false, fake media. I think because of evil operations. Because when you look at one, you stand up one based on their energy level, power, richness, intelligence, IQ, availability, uh, you know, ability and skill and all of that versus the other one. This, 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 there's no contest. It's like you have a grown person who's a skilled expert versus uh, a wannabe person who hasn't, a younger who hasn't done anything in reality. Amazing message, yeah? So, the nations need saviors. I pray they rise up all across Africa. I pray they rise up all around, all around the world. Not people that want to front their ideologies. Not people that want to take advantage of people. Not people that want to steal, kill, and destroy. But people that are genuinely from their heart that want to serve. Make America great again, that slogan is real. It's not some hype, you know, MAGA. It's not some hype statement. People can say what they want, but it's real. In every way from A to Z. 
I feel my heart goes out to the man because he has a big job, but he has the energy for it. And this has become the purpose of his life. It's kind of evident, you see, you know. He's pushing 80 years old now. He's done, he's done all these other things in his life. He, he has this mission now to do this. He was talking about a building that he had a new building going up. He says, I don't care about that building. He, he, his own business, he says, I don't care at all about that. I'm running for president. I'm on a mission. All of that stuff, can my sons can handle it, or I, I don't even care anymore. What a great, what a great thing. So the position is clear. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. People that are voting for the other side, they don't know. They're voting for the devil's policies. Every conceivable left-wing lunacy, that's what they're voting for. But they don't care because they're deluded by the thing with the personality between the two people. But guess what? Not everybody's like that. The eyes of people have come open. I saw a vision, the red color of the number. I hope and pray it'll go above 300. But it doesn't matter because you only need 270. If it's 270, 271, 272, that's enough. But let it go above 300 to be like a more of a landslide. All of the swing states, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Nevada, Virginia, on and on. Pennsylvania, they're going to, it's like they're flipping. And if one or two of them doesn't, there still should be enough that the victory is done. Why? Because of the, the position of what's going to happen for the American people. And you know, what happens for America, like it or not, affects the world. Because Donald Trump is going to go after Putin to say, stop this Ukraine thing. He's going to try to work in the Middle East to stop the whole thing. I saw a news, a news report. I wish I could have all these screens and news reports going on. I think I, I almost felt this morning like I'd start to do something like that. Uh, uh, Lord, let it happen. I, I, I think I would have fun doing it. Quote some different things. Talk about some real issues going on. We could have a, a television program like that. So be it in Jesus' name. So be it in Jesus' mighty name. So, I saw where even in the Middle East, some things are starting to get to a head. Ceasefire. They want to agree to ceasefire. I saw, I'm not saying it's, anyway, subject to confirmation, but I saw a couple of news reports like that last night. I was shocked, really, because it looked like these things are in full, full swing. Iran is threatening. You know, this is very bad what's going on. Between the, uh, what they, who, those who call themselves the enemies of Israel versus Israel, it's very bad. It's, this thing is very bad. The looming threat from China, even the North Korean guy, saying that he wants to start to rebuild his rockets again, when Trump really defused him, it'll happen again. Because Donald Trump will go back to meet him again, sit down, have a banquet, eat some food, talk and laugh together, and say, hey, Mr. Oon, whatever, what's his name? Oon something, Mr. Oon, hey, calm down. And the guy will go, oh, you know, I like you, Donald. <laughs> That's what happened last time. They see this lady, what are they going to do? Are you kidding me? Do you know when ISIS was the problem? They said it would take a few years to sort it out. They did it in a few weeks. But this didn't become public media because it was so graphic. But uh, President Trump had the military guys go in there and just clean house and just rid the whole thing. And you know how many people are, should be happy about that in the Middle East? Some people say, well, it's really wild what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, it is. Look at, the, and, and I'll say it further even, look at people in these places that are suffering so much. Do you care about them at all? If they're going to die or lose their heads 
people chopping their heads off and sticking their heads on poles in cities, raping men and women, raping men and women. That's what these guys were doing. Killing people, slaughtering them. Do you think we should stand up for those potential victims in the future that that nonsense can stop? And the only way to stop a ravenous, murderous, possessed, maniacal lunatic is to just snuff them out. And that's what the military is for. Praise the Lord. You know, we don't care. We don't get involved in politics because we're, the, you know, we're like in the church. You loser. You're a loser. You don't care about the world. Out of, you don't care about anybody in the Middle East. You don't care about anybody in Asia. You don't care about people in America. You don't care about your people in Africa. You don't care about your people in Europe or anywhere. Are you kidding me? What kind of person are you? What kind of person are you really to talk like, think like that? Should the church be involved in the things going on in the world? A trillion percent. We're supposed to we're supposed to be the ones that stop it or put it on for the for the purpose of the advancing of the kingdom. What's good is good for the people. I had a vision, a prophetic dream, actually, another prophetic dream. And I had a prophetic dream about a few weeks ago. And the, in the dream, at the end of the dream, the Lord spoke audibly the name of my church. It's a new name. I wasn't expecting that. It was shocking to the core of my being. I won't announce it. We're just going to put it together, put it on, and it's going to be launched. And the most amazing name. And I thought it through, and I thought, God, you are beyond brilliant. I, I don't even know if I would have thought of that. <clears throat> the, the name that he gave me. Because I, because I had a name based off of a name that God gave me before of our ministry, a, a subderivative of that. And I never, in my spirit, I never felt satisfied with the name. I thought, this is the best I can think of to call it. And I even registered that name and all that. But I, I thought, and I have a domain for it, for websites and all that. I just never felt, you know, fully convicted that this was like, boom, I felt it. But when God spoke the, the, the name of this in a dream, the other one, the new one, I was like, this is hot. This will go around the world. Anyway, coming soon. So <laughs> I, I, had a, I had another prophetic dream. I saw these black draped women. You know how they wear with the jihab or hijab, whatever it's called, hijab. and They're all wrapped up to their eyes and black all the way to their... It's a, in the hot desert, black is the hot color. Are they trying to make people suffer? Even that's oppressive. And I saw them scurrying about. There were bombs that had blown up cities. Some of them I saw were cut, some of them were cut like with, uh, they were bleeding, even on their faces, others were wounded. I saw this laying down, meaning they were dead, and in another part of the vision. And, but it, the emphasis wasn't really on that. I saw all that, but the emphasis that stuck in my mind, and I think when I think about this prophetic dream the most, is I saw these women running, and they were crying. They were all crying, grieving, in pain, in agony, in tears. And all of a sudden, I saw this heart with light on it. Kind of like that old painting of Jesus from maybe the Catholic Church did it. He had his heart like this with the, uh, the crown of thorns wrapped around the heart, you know? Like a vine with thorns on it wrapped around the heart like this. Very handsome face, beautiful hair, big green eyes, the savior with the crown, and uh, the heart. They call it the bleeding heart, right? I saw that kind of thing. And I saw it come from the, from the spirit world, from the heaven, and come and touch these women. 
And I didn't really see many men in division. I don't know why. They were there, but the emphasis was on the women more. I don't know why. And I saw people wearing these black head-to-toe things, and it just came and touched them like this, right on the chest on the left side where the heart is, and like go into them and be upon them. And all of a sudden, their face of anguish, some had the cover up to here, some didn't. I can see their cheeks and their lips and their face, facial expressions. Some were cut like from the shrapnel of bombs. One was gashed here and there was blood coming. A few of them. And I could just see quick, quick succession, all these different people. And there were some men there, but then the, these women really stood out. And boom, the heart hit. And some were even seeing it moving in the, in the air. And they were running and leaping to, to grab it with their hand. In the spirit. Now, this is a, this is a spiritual significant vision. A, a, a spiritual symbolic thing. And then the minute they could touch it or it would touch them, their whole countenance changed. Shoo! And light came in their eyes and their face lit up with joy. And they began to just dance and like lift their hands. And I thought, my God, what am I seeing? And you, can I tell you, this was in Iraq and Syria. In the nations of Iraq, especially Iraq. I was very convinced I was in Iraq in the spirit. I was there in the spirit. I was there physically in the spirit. In the dream. And I thought, does anyone care about those people? I do. God does. Jesus does. To the military policies of uh, the pres from the President of the United States mean anything for those people? You better believe it. Oh, yeah. I saw them getting free like that. Meaning what? Liberation is coming, I guess, militarily. Yeah, that's part of it. And it happened under Donald Trump. He did it in his regime. He did it under his presidency. And all these last few years, under the lost one in the White House, and his uh, <laughs> inefficient assistant, have you seen any talk about these people again? Have you heard even the name ISIS? Have you heard it? No. No. Why? Because most all of them have been decimated. They're dead. They're gone. Their leaders are gone. Donald Trump spoke about a few of them. <clears throat> and... Uh, Iran, he, he dealt with them before, he'll deal with them again. And I saw myself in the spirit standing in Baghdad. I pray it can happen because I had a guy that had connections with the American military. I talked about him before. He was a very famous bodybuilder named Dennis Tinerino. T-I-N-E-R-I-N-O. Tinerino. He was Mr. Olympia. Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Olympia, Mr. Universe, I think, a few times. Arnold Schwarzenegger beat him out on the number of times. And then I just saw where Arnold Schwarzenegger went with the woman in America. He's a very mixed up character. I, I really respected him for his success in business and life, his bodybuilding, his political uh, thing, no, not at all. But his acting career, his... His ability to pull himself up when everybody said he couldn't make it to become anything. And he did. Kudos to him for that. But this political, his political, some of these guys in Hollywood, they're political. It's nonsense. So uh, the second guy to him in success in the bodybuilding championship world was Dennis Tinerino. I spoke to him on the phone. He had gotten saved and became a great prophet. He prophesied to me on the phone. At that time, I didn't have a recorder that I could have uh, recorded what he said. And I was trying to get back to him again to let him repeat what he said. But of course, he, wouldn't, he didn't really do it. Um, <clears throat> and then he said, uh, he had a strong Brooklyn accent, New York accent. They told him, you know, 
I have this connection with the military and we can, you want to go to Baghdad? I can arrange it. We can go there. But the American military will protect us. We can go and do a meeting there and prophesy. You want to do that? Because I had said that to him, I want to do it. He, this, this, that was his answer. And you know what's really sad? I was busy traveling in the world and he was doing whatever he was doing. He got cancer and died. He's dead. He died at 60 years old a few years ago. We could have went to Baghdad. I saw myself with television cameras. Kind of like, a, I say it in a joking way, maybe like the two witnesses in the Bible. <laughs> Except the dragon's not going to come and <laughs> knock us out and that we have to be raised again from the, from the floor. I, I skipped that part. <laughs> but to go there and to prophesy over the Middle East, let it still happen, Lord, in Jesus' name. Raise up, people. If the other people won the election, I would never trust them to help me with anything. Some governments, you can't, because the people there are corrupt. They're devils. They're for the devil. They're not for God. They're not even for the gospel. You know the guy there, the, the, the Lulu man? Lulu is a good word. I think it means... Uh, <clears throat> a sharp person in reality. So, that, meaning like, let, let, let me rephrase that. Let me not use Lulu. Lulu the great singer lady named Lulu, and Lulu is a, kind of a good, uh, I looked it up in the dictionary. It has a good meaning. Uh, cuckoo. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, he, he said, the, pa the palmist said, and let's, let's look at the Book of Palms. <laughs> so they made a meme and put a turban on his head like he's like a, like a new age guy, you know? And they made some music, woo, and some stars flying in there like the palms. Let's read the palms, you know? That, that, that's his version of... But Donald Trump is for real Christianity. Anyway, moving along. So, <clears throat> and he had a... He had a worship service in the Rose Garden. Stephen Curtis Chapman came to sing. And uh, they sang, he sang, How Great Thou Art. And the presence of God fell, and the White House staff had their hands up like this, worshiping God. Let me tell you, that has never happened in America. It didn't happen under Bush. It didn't happen under Clinton. It definitely didn't happen under Obama. No way. It didn't happen under... Uh, Eisenhower or even Kennedy or Nixon or Reagan or Lyndon Johnson or Gerald Ford or Jimmy Carter. Nobody, no president in, in the last cent couple of centuries, maybe from the very early uh, founding fathers, they, they had some meetings where the glory came. In fact, St. Paul's Cathedral in New York, across from City Hall on Broadway down there, uh, uh, there's a church called St. Paul's Cathedral, and they have a mural on the wall inside this big old cathedral, and, it, and the title of the painting is called The Glory, and George Washington is standing there and some others, the Founding Fathers. And they showed the glory cloud coming over the place, and they had their hands up in the air. Yeah, they had some... They, th those guys had some visitations of God. There was a revival in 1857 on Fulton Street, the Fulton Street Fish Market in New York. 10,000 people at a time would, came out from their work at lunchtime to pray fervent prayers in the Holy Ghost. And that was the time of John, uh, Charles Finney. Charles G. Finney was moving through the, 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 the northeastern states of America, bringing revival. And, and countless people were, were getting saved. They called that the, was that the, the, they call it the second wave or the second revival. There was some name for it. Back in the 18, in the middle of the 1800s, there was some move of God back then. Check your history. But these days, and the Lord's saying, now, can I do it again? Yeah. Can you imagine the founding fathers of America standing with their hands up and the, they actually, sh the painter painted a white cloud coming over the whole place. Why would he do that? Because it really happened. And they actually saw the cloud. 
And the people that were there in the, in the church, they actually experienced the cloud coming and they saw it. When does that happen in our churches today? Especially in a city like Nairobi. Oh, God. Where? I know one or two or three or four or five or six. You know, I, I don't want pastors to get mad at me and think, well, I'm, I'm, I'm good prophet. You know me. And, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a man that loves God. Well, okay, prove it more. Prove it more. Tell me more about it. Call me on the phone. Tell me some testimonies of what happened this week in your church. Don't just expect me to uh, blanketly endorse everybody. Though I know thousands of pastors in the city of Nairobi. I know thousands of saints more in the city of Nairobi. They're my friends. <clears throat> they're going to be members of our churches. They're, 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 they're people that, were, you know, that we've known for a long time. As many we've met. Many multitudes of leaders respect me and, and the anointing that I carry and, and the ministry we, we have from the Lord all these years. But when does that happen on a Sunday? The cloud came so thick, instead of singing, oh, 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 for two hours, cultural songs in Swahili or whatever. Why don't you sing in the Holy Ghost? I went to one church, prophesied there, it was powerful. And it took a long time, but at the very end, before the preacher came on, the host pastor there, the presence of God began to move through the worship team a bit, a bit. I've been to some, and it was, and I, I made a note of that. I thought, these guys are switched on. They're really serious about what they're doing. It wasn't heavy. It was a bit, but it was the, the bit that was there was tangible, and I, you could measure it. I, but I've gone to some churches, big-name churches, no presence. I could, I, could name the, I could name them. I could name them, and I could say details about them, but I, I shouldn't do that, maybe. So I won't. But uh, well, whatever, I shouldn't. Just to be whatever. Let me leave that to, let me leave that to itself. But I've been to some places where the, the presence of God is not even there. There's no anointing. There was no anointing. Zero. So what did they operate on? Program, organization, hype, emotions, shouting. I went to one church. I got so annoyed when I walked in. I told them all to stop. Of course, I'll never go back there. By the way, that was last Sunday. <laughs> last Sunday morning, the first one I went to. What a horror story. And uh, the assistant passed. They were still trying to sing. They've been singing for like how long? And they're still singing. I thought, and this, this is my thought. I'm talking about God raising saviors, raising powerful people to save nations, but also to work inside the church. Let me add that. I thought if you're called of God as an assistant pastor and you have any kind of testosterone and that plus Holy Ghost together, you're a real man and you're a real man of God. You'd get up and take the mic and start to open the Bible and teach the Bible and say something meaningful to the people. Because the saints that are coming to church, they're supposed to be learning things about doctrine and the gospel and the Bible and God. Not you singing out of key, oh, yes, you are, or whatever the other words they use. I don't know. I walked in, I was, in, I was furious. You know, the prophet in me, you know, I'm a wild man sometimes, and all the time, really, but sometimes a little bit more dramatic. And I walked in, I was like, this has to stop. This is noise. I walked up, please, I waved my hand at everybody, please stop. I'm going to take over now. And I thought to myself, because you guys obviously don't know how to run a meeting. And I spoke about uh, a very short time and then the power went off. But the, the short time that I spoke, I'm still going to release that video. This week I'm going to release that because it's short. It's like a clip instead of a whole message because the, power, the electricity went off and uh, nobody could hear anything anymore. So... I, lay, I lifted my hands up and said, I tried, I came, I'm leaving. And I left without receiving any offering or anything. And of course, they wouldn't be courteous to send any because they don't have any kind of 
backbone like that. Servant of God comes, you just send him an offering anyway. Whatever was wrong there wasn't me. It was what they were doing. So, glory to God. I spoke for the few minutes that I did. We're going to release the video. It'll bless a lot of people. But some of these churches, they just stand up wasting time like that. No, you're supposed to be teaching this book. Now, I found a private, I think there's a private message, I, not for me to teach on today, but from a certain portion of the Bible, just a lovely story here. And I won't, I won't do it now because I think it's a separate message and God is speaking to me through it personally. So the Bible is also to, to, bl to bless us personally, not just to, uh, to, to teach or to talk about. But, you know, I could, read, I could hear from God just by reading this right here, and I did. In fact, it's so strong personally to me that I'm not going to share it now on the air. I'm not going to do it. Let me just leave it there. So you know me, I quote a lot of scriptures when I'm preaching, every time I'm teaching. But today I'm speaking and testifying from heaven's perspective about what's happening in our day in the world. It's very meaningful. We can add scriptures in, this, in line of this a lot to it also. So do we really care about what God cares about? When I see a person who's in any way anointed, I, I marvel at them. Because I know it costs them a lot to carry that grace. It costs me a lot to carry the glory. It'll cost anybody a lot to carry the glory. It's not a joke. It's very costly for a person to do something great to even save nations. But you know, you have to somehow be in touch with the Almighty to even get the grace or the the passion or the mindset of the heart. To, and how better more than, than men that have been, uh, have really made themselves great by their effort and their work instead of others who just get everything handed to them and they mess everything up that's given to them. The guy that's in the big house now over there, in politics for decades, hasn't done anything good for anybody accept himself. Now you see how he is. It's judgment. And there'll be no recovery from it. Because, you know, people have to pay the consequences for the things they've done in life. And then you see a man through everything. Attacks of the system. Attacks of even assassins' bullets attempted. Attacks of the media. Attacks of systems and still stands and keeps moving. Why? Because God, God is, has kept them in his hand. And we thank you, Lord. I'm so thrilled and grateful. I'm so thrilled and grateful that this thing is coming out, coming through the way you've ordained. At the position of heaven is Donald Trump to be the president, the 47th one of the United States of America beginning this Tuesday, two days from now. That's the position of heaven. You know, you'd have to be a buffoon to think any other way. And then there's people in the church, very misguided people, who don't even understand doctrine and the fact that we're victorious and we're righteous. They would say, well, God's judging America. Why? So anything we do that's good for America, we're out of the will of God, because we're not supposed to save it. Because it's supposed to all go down. Who are you working for? The devil? This sad, sorry woman who I met in a meeting who was very mixed up, got up to speak and the pastor just shut her down. You know when the preacher walks up on the platform and gets behind you like this, like leaning on the pulpit, like meaning, meaning he wants you to shut up and get off the stage. And he did that after about two or three minutes. And I was appalled at this woman talking about witchcraft and how they were like involved in it and how it has this prevalence everywhere. And I was like, are you a spokesman for the devil? Shut up and get off the stage, woman. What is wrong with you? And then 
tried to write me, and I didn't answer because I know that they came from another country. They're going to cry about, you know, they have no money, and not, I'm not helping you. I want to help people that are good. I don't want to, you know, I'm not the... I'm not, I'm not running the loser's fund. I'm running the winner's fund. Praise the Lord. If someone's good, I'm going to sow into it. If it's not good, I don't want to. I'm very outspoken today, aren't I? I got a message from them later on. Oh, there's an attack of some kind of spirits like uh, being released across Africa. I thought, you lying devil. <laughs> Block and delete. You'll never have the privilege of, 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 of letting me read your nonsense again. This is a person that says they're, pre they're preaching for Jesus. They're called of God. And you talk about what the devil's going to do or try to do as if he's somebody. Let me tell you something about the devil. He's the most despicable, stupid, idiotic loser you ever, you've ever seen in the history of the human race. And before and before and after. <laughs> The devil. <laughs> he's in the worst position of anybody. And you want to think that he's okay. I, I saw a famous uh, rock singer. <coughs> <coughs> I saw a famous rock singer who they were honoring. And the guy, the guy, uh, they made this evil looking chair for him to sit on with like bats on it and stuff like that. And it's like, is that really who this guy is? Because when you listen to the guy, you know, every human, every human, you know, every human, even if they're evil and working for the other team, they still have a kind of an entertaining side to them. A, a little bit about their, something from their humanity by the gift of God, because we were all created by, by God, yes? That might be like funny or interesting or amusing to you. And this guy has a little bit of that. So I kind of listened to him. I prayed that he, he would get saved, you know. So he, here's this big production they do. And then the, the announcer is saying, you know, this, this guy, the, the, sing, the rock singer, uh, uh, with his dark lord Satan. I thought, no, you didn't just do that. And they sat him on a chair that looked like a throne and it had the head of a bat with wings coming off the top. Someone created this evil, this evil throne chair for this guy. And I thought, man, I wish I could get through and talk to him, you know. I tell him, brother, bro, not even brother, but hey, Mr. Uh, blank, blank, your name. Is that true what they said that you're really, are you really with the devil? Are you, is, is that your position in life? Say, dude. You're on the losing team. I'll tell you straight. Jesus is Lord. Yeah, that's it. Give your heart to him today. Change sides. Because you're, you're, you're older now. You've become sick, you know. He has some disease has attacked him. He's an older man now. He's, he, was the hot, he was the hot rock god guy of the eight, 70s and, 60s, 70s, and 80s. So now... That's 50 years ago. So now he's, he's in his 70s. And some disease got on him now where he may not live very long. I pray I'll get to people like that. This guy stands up and says, you're with your dark Lord Satan. Is that right? Is that your position? Don't lie. Just tell me. Is it true or not? And then let me preach the gospel to you. Yeah. God needs some real men. How many are getting what I'm saying here? Lift your hands, everybody. How, I, how many know God needs some real people, not these, 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 religious, these religious knuckleheads in the pulpits talk, telling Bible stories or whatever. They never get to the point of dealing with social issues, even governments, even, yeah, even, even political things, even politicians, even political races and all that. To make sure that the person that has the policies that are going to benefit the society get in and the ones that don't get out. And I want to pray over nations like Kenya and other countries right now too, that God is going to come strong with a strong hand to deal with men 
that are, that are against his will and against his people. And they are not going to succeed in any of that. And Father, who can you raise up to be a righteous son that cares about the people? We saw in Nigeria, Peter Obi, who seemed like a good guy, intelligent, had brilliant ideas, loaded with ideas and policies to help Nigeria. But the old regime rigged them out. Put this old man in there, Mr. Tinubu. Put him in there. Can't even walk up the stairs. 80-something uh, years old. Uh, they say, oh, he's better than the last guy. The last guy was bad. Ruined the economy for the other religion. They said they can't even deal with the terrorism issue because they're all on the same team, you know. And uh, this guy is like more, you know, moderate than them. He's better. But I'm like, yeah, but he's still... What is he actually going to do to change the the common good of the common man of the nation of Nigeria. Obi could have done it. I pray he stays with it and runs again. <clears throat> you know, when it doesn't work the first time, do it again. In Kenya, who you got? You got nobody. I don't see anybody. Who you got? Who do you have? Then you got these old ones that have been there a long time. None of them. Who else? L let me tell you something. Historically, this happened. <clears throat> Samuel the prophet went to Jesse's house to anoint the next king. He went through all the sons that looked good, but didn't feel a witness on any of them. And he had to say to Jesse, uh, I went through all your boys. I know God told me to come here, but I haven't seen the one who's the Lord's anointed to be, might you have another son? And Jesse had to think, oh no, it couldn't be David. They had to call David in. Sure enough, boom! David was the one. Rejected of men, chosen of God. Where are these people? I prophesied that they have to come forth in Jesus' name. In many nations, Europe, Africa, America, obviously, that's getting sorted out. <laughs> sorted out. Thank God, that's done. It's been a mighty battle the last few years. Look what they tried to do to Donald Trump. They, tried, they impeached him. They tried to imprison him. They did fake cases against him. They took his money and the hundreds of millions of dollars. They tried to kill him. <laughs> what else are you going to do, man? And some of the people are saying, you know, like after the election, there's still some more hurdles to get over. But we, we're going to pray them all down, too. That the inauguration happens and everything gets set into motion. Can you say amen? I've spoken what I've had to say, what's on the mind of God here. But I want to say for all the nations of the world, they need saviors. The people need saviors. All the people complaining and crying, like in the nation of Kenya, what's going on politically and all that. They can't... They really can't do anything to change any of it by themselves. They're just one person. They don't have all the money. They don't have billions to work with. They don't have friends. They don't have mechanisms. They don't have systems. They don't have operations. They don't have a government. They don't have all of that. So what are they going to do? But, they, but, but everybody can pray. Lift your hands. God is a righteous God. He's not for anyone. Remember the one that said, hey, the angel came. Are you for us? The angel said, I'm not for anyone. I'm only for what's right. I'm not on your side or their side. I'm on the Lord's side. On the Lord's side. I'm over here. I didn't say I'm endorsing you or them. Your battle is to get things right yourself. That's how God is. He's no respecter of persons. If you do things right, he'll love you. He'll help you. If you don't want to do things right, he'll leave you alone. And a lot of people in the church have been left alone. Go through all the slum areas. Go through all the impoverished areas. There's a church, there's an iron sheath church put up everywhere with a sign on the front. Inside, they're just doing business. Just some guy going in there 
trying to shuck and jive people for money. The rent is cheap for the land because it's in a horrible place. I've been there. I've preached in them, many of them. I'm pretty much going to transition now from that and to do better meetings in our own. But I've gone to a lot of them. I wanted to. The Lord spoke to me last week. That's why I, I, today I didn't go anywhere. I'm just in my own studio. But I needed to rest a little bit and do a few other things. And the Lord said, uh, the Lord said to me this week after that, he said, you've passed the test, son. You've passed the test. You've passed the test. Why? Because I went everywhere. They treated me any kind of way. Ripped me off, gave me nothing, lied. Some places I went to and got zero. I spent money to go, to preach the gospel, to prophesy, to bless everybody. Got nothing for it. And I'm, and I'm happy. I'm happy to serve God. I work for God. The Lord says, son, you've pleased me in this. And now I'm going to bless you. The reward of God is sure. You will know people by the level of reward they, and favor they have. And, and again, back to Donald Trump. He has his own money. And everything he touches turns to gold. He just seems to win, win, win. Everything he does. They throw this at him. He turns it into something else. Come on. The McDonald's thing. He says, I'm going to go be a servant and work at McDonald's to prove that I can do the job. When the other one lies and said they worked there and never did. The McDonald's Corporation has no record of them ever working for the McDonald's Corporation. Yet they said they worked there. I mean, what kind of character of a person is that? A blatant lie like that. People telling lies. <clears throat> a real man doesn't stand and lie. You know, men that are successful, they don't even have a reason to lie. What does it benefit them to lie? But a one who gets everything by hook and crook and privilege and systems giving things to them, they have to manipulate their way, whatever, they'll, they'll be the biggest liars. But someone that's a, a, a giant in their own industry, whatever, they, they, they don't have to lie. Even his own platform, he made it the name Truth, his own media network, he made it, he called it, social media network, he called it Truth. They said the name can never be available. People told him you'll never get it. He says, keep going, keep looking. Like the name that God gave me of my church is a, is a very, can be a very, the, the name when you know what it is, you go, oh my God, that may be a bit of a complicated name to, to have. But I'll get it because God spoke it. And however I, I'll have it set, it'll be set. It's, it's being done now. <clears throat> he said, oh, you'll never get the name Truth uh, as a domain name on the internet. How could you get it? He said they kept looking. They found it for sale from somebody. They got it for $2,000. To Trump, let me tell you something. To Donald Trump, $2,000 is like not even a penny. $2,000 to him is so no money. It's even hard to describe how so no money that is. $2,000 to him. I think a few seconds goes by when he's flying in his jet. And $2,000 passes by. Boing! Fuel expenses, $2,000. It may finance three seconds of his life. Two seconds, maybe. $2,000. What is $2,000 to him? $2,000 to a lot of people is a lot of money. That's 260,000 shillings in Kenya. 260,000 shillings. That's a lot of money to a lot of people. But to him, or to a person that's successful, really walking in high things, that's really no money. It's really no money. So I'll say this too. If you appreciate, you really appreciate an outspoken prophet who could speak all these things and really tell the truth about some things, I want you to partner with me in this ministry. I want you to sow a seed. Right now, the information will be on the screen. Uh, those watching on Facebook, it'll be on the top. You, look at any of my posts, anyone. Just go up the next one, the next one, or the one below. From this live, any post, you see my PayPal is there. My m is there. My phone number is there. You want to use Western Union, you can do it. 
Uh, if you want bank de banking details to send a wire transfer, call, contact me, send me a direct message. It's very easy to, uh, to do that. I make sure that our information is always out there. I don't want it to be a mystery for people to find out. Honey. I want to make it easy for you. Partner with this grace and sow a seed today. I want everybody to do that. Sow a seed today. Sow a seed right now on PayPal if you're uh, somewhere in the world, <clears throat> on M-Pesa if you're in Kenya, or SendWave if you know how to use the system that goes to M-Pesa. Uh, Western Union even has a mobile wallet right now. You can send it direct to the M-Pesa system. You kind of have to know how to do that. But PayPal is great for <coughs> people internationally. And their pace is great for people in the, in the Kenyan sphere of things. I had a partner the other day. Uh, uh, we talked on the phone. They wanted to meet me, and they gave me a nice envelope, a good one, thick with cash. <coughs> and we had lunch and sat there and talked for a long time. That was very nice. So if you'd like to do something like that, give me a call. We can schedule the time together if it's uh, something serious like that. But I want everybody to partner with this anointing. We're doing a lot. We're about to do so much more. In Jesus' name. Well, I could say a lot more, but let me wrap it there. Father, we pray again for what they call these or those. If we're outside, it's those. If you're inside, it's these United States of America. My beloved homeland, my beloved country. I'm from New York City, as many, as you, many of you know. And I care about what happens in America. Why? Because it's good for the people of the world. It's good for the people of the United States. It's good for the people everywhere. That right things get done. It's important. And in nations like Kenya, other countries in Africa, whatever, the people need to rise up politically to make sure that righteous men are in power because it just changes the course of things for the better for people. Remember, God said, I'm in heaven, I'm up there, but earth, I've given it to the children of men. You all need to figure this, these things out, you people on the earth. You have a job to do to take care of your own world. You want to change the world for the better, you have to do something about issues going on. And the nations need saviors. The people need saviors. Jesus Christ, the Savior, and also men and women that are filled with a divine rage to do good. And that's what's going to bring things. That's what's going to bring things. Into the right positions in Jesus name. <clears throat> Some of my books available to partners. The Laws of Success. The benefits of excellence and prophetic keys to successful living are available in digital format. If you're a partner and you've not yet gotten them, you have to write me, please. I, I'm a very busy man. Tomorrow I have so much going on. The next day, the next day, I'm, I'm, I have events every day. I'm a, an extremely busy man, uh, more so these days. Really, it, it's amazing. My schedules are just... Uh, so you remind me, please. And I can get you digital copies of these if you're overseas or physically we have uh, some of them in print, especially this one, many, and a few of the benefits of excellence left. Laws of success needs to go to reprint. We're sold out on this one. But these three are available in digital and available as my love gift to, for my partners as you so exceed in Jesus' name. Write me a message direct message, send a seed 
through the mechanisms that are you're seeing on the screen and on Facebook, those you see in the top of the heading of the title. Take advantage of those and sow a seed into this grace today. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that your will is being done and accomplished in our world today. And things are happening for the better to help mankind live a glorious, righteous, and peaceable and prosperous life. For your own glory, in Jesus' name. For this is thy will concerning us, in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. God bless you. See you on the next one. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119-105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10:41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet, will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.